Good morning. We do not own any of the rights to the music that you hear in the background by the Canton Spirituals. As they sing, send me our goal. We welcome each of you to our live broadcast. God bless you. God bless you. Our evangelist will be the person that would open us up this morning. So welcome to Shepherd's Gathering Fellowship. First Sunday morning worship service in the month of March. So we look forward to the blessings of the Lord. So join us now as we get ready to go into service. We'll turn you over now to Evangelist Gary. Good morning, good morning, good morning. We bless the Lord, we thank the Lord. We thank God for our apostle being back in the house with us. Let us give God a hand for that. Thank you, Lord. Let us give God a round of applause for this being who God is. Thank you, Lord. Thank you, Lord. How many of us went to work this week? I know one that just started a new job that don't realize the danger that he's in now. Good morning, <laughs> But he's excited Noel. about the job that he has now. <laughs> so this week, whenever you sit back and you think from Monday to now and what God has done, we owe God a praise. You hear me? We owe God a praise. Did you go home for this week? No. Nope. Nope. Were you born this week? Come on. Did he take you and bring you back and forth? Yes, he did. Because, in fact, we still have activity of our limbs on this morning. And it's funny that this morning as I was getting ready to get dressed and I was thinking on the goodness of Jesus. You get what I'm saying? Yes. Because one of the things we know is that on last Saturday, it wasn't even Saturday, it was on last Friday. Because I had wound up doing a 20-hour shift on my job. An apostle had came to get me. He said he wasn't feeling well. See, let me tell you how good God is. Because whenever you actually believe on the word, you hear what I said? Not believe on what John say, what Kendra say, what Christian say. But when you believe on the word of God, God said he's yes. a God that cannot lie. Right yeah. or wrong? Right. Yes. And he's not going to lie, right? right? Yeah. So if he said it, I can trust him and believe in it, right? right? So one of the things that I was sitting there and I was listening and I was thinking and as I was preparing to get ready for service and I started thinking of the chain of events and how God had continued to move because even whenever he picked me up, I said, do you want to go on and let's get you checked out? He was like, no, you need to try to get some rest. We came all the way back to the house that laid down in the bed for me to get some sleep. He allowed me to sleep most of the day. But then I kept noticing he kept moving. And I kept saying, do you want me to take you to get checked? Evidently, he knew that he was going on a vacation because he was like, let me go and get something to eat. We done went out to eat and enjoy the off time with each other right wrong. Yes. I want to go and take him to the ER. And he was gone in. For a while. You get what I'm saying? Sometimes I look at things and I think about things and I think about the things that's going on around me and I start watching and I start observing. I start paying attention because sometimes whenever we're up under attack, can y'all say attack? Attack. When we're up under attack, sometimes we know we're under attack and mm -hmm. sometimes we have no clue we're under attack. Yes. But one of the biggest things that I go back is whenever, um, Apostle always used this scripture with us all the time. You have to remember that you have that great cloud of witness. Yes. <laughs> and you got to remember, old man Joe, when all God's children came in. Come on, guess That's who right. was coming in then? Truth for that, my grandma said. He was coming in to present himself. That's right. Because God made him too. That's right. <laughs> so he had to go and present himself. So whenever he went in and started presenting himself, he was like, God said, where you been? He said, I've been to and from. Up and down. Up and down. Come on. So you know what I started thinking about? I said, you know what? Wait a minute. We got a whole lot of stuff going on. We get distracted by little things. Yes. Can we say little things? Little we things. We get distracted by little things. And I was trying to figure out. Y'all scared to talk? And you ain't got to talk to me this morning because see, I feel Well, I'm going to talk. They, they, they get distracted by They distracted right now. He, his Bible got him occupied right yeah. now. He, he reading Ezekiel right now. You ain't even got to talk to me. It's okay. Because see, this morning, I feel 
feel good because God had already started ministering to me. Right. And he had started ministering to That's me. That's right, the little week. things, the tax. So That's whenever right. I was looking at that, well, is that we tend to get caught up by little things. Mm -hmm. We yep. get caught up because of the fact we see stuff about our children acting up, but we still missing that. Wait a minute, it doesn't matter how much income that I got coming in. Yes. <laughs> it's hitting me whenever I go to the grocery store. Yes. So I got to continue to pray and ask God to supply all my needs. And I yeah. say, some of my needs are all my needs. All my needs. I need to supply all my needs. He so whenever I keep on looking at it, and I started thinking about it, I said, you know, Lord, there were some things that Jesus told us over in Matthew that we had to start looking because you, we would know by the signs that you was on your way back. So whenever I started thinking about that, and I started looking at that, and I said, you know what I said? We are in times where there is suffering in the world. That's we thought right. we went through something last year, the year before, and hey, you know how everybody always talk about COVID this, COVID that. People yeah. don't want to work because COVID, and that's why they saying we short on our job because people don't want to work because COVID. No, people don't want to work because they have got burnt out from going in punching clocks is what happened. And they've been treated any kind of way. So everybody's yes, looking yes, for more. Yes, she is. Yes, they're she looking is. She for on more. Fire. That's right, Apostle. She <laughs> on fire. So because they're looking for more, mm -hmm. they ain't found more. But see, the only way you're going to get more is whenever you really tap into who God really is. Mm -hmm. yes. When you get to know who Jesus really tap is. In, tap in. You got to tap in. Apostle started teaching, and I hate that I can't be in Bible study, but he was talking about the authority, right? The We've been talking about the authority. <laughs> Go to John 14 And I need you to read Verse 12 Look out. And tell me what it's like Come on preacher uh, Fairly fairly I say unto you He that believes on me The works that I shall do He also he do also in greater works than these shall do Wait hold on right now He said what? Greater works Greater works Wait a minute Something wrong right? Mm -hmm. Have we tapped into greater works? Look out girl Have we tapped into doing greater works? Or are we still trying to stay on the surface and trying to just do what Jesus did? We forgot that he said that we would do greater, right? Yep. No, we, we, we ain't doing greater. We ain't doing greater because of the fact we're too busy trying to, to outdo someone else. Yes. We're too busy trying to prove who we are. Jesus didn't prove who he was. He kept walking, didn't he? Yep. He kept going on doing God's business, didn't he? Yep. Even when people didn't want to receive him, he did what he had to do and he kept moving, right? That's he right. didn't stay there. He didn't keep argue with people. Keep even whenever he was in the temple, he was 12 years old. Think about it. Right. Because that's whenever we really started looking at it and noticing that, wait a minute, this is the Son of God. He know a whole lot of stuff that we seem to think that we got right, right or wrong. That's he right. He said that how many days was he in the temple teaching? Uh, John 14 or long. How many days was he there? 14 and 12. How many days was he there? I was there three days. Mama he was there for three days. She was there for three days. Come on. Good. So my thing is, is that whenever he started teaching, he was teaching the elders. Mm -hmm. <laughs> Some of us as elders, we don't want to listen. We don't want to listen to anybody. That's right. We think we know everything. He we think we don't questions. learn nothing from nobody. And answering questions. Come and telling on. them things that they just couldn't seem to understand. He was confounding them. That's not like he was key. So whenever we look at these things, David said, great is he, right? Yeah. That lives in me. No, right? that was Paul. Now Paul, sorry, wrong person, wrong reference. Greater. So if it's greater is he that lives in me, why can't I do greater works? Look out. Why, why can't I do greater things? Mm -hmm. Why can't my lifestyle be greater? You get what I'm saying? Right. Let me tell you something. Last night I got off from work, not kind of crazy on that job. I'm not even going to lie to you, it was crazy. Some of the stuff that I work with with these kids, I don't even want my children coming in contact with them. Yes. But one of the things I have to look at is that no matter how bad, how bad they act up, I got to remember who I am. Yes. I had a little girl that decided she was going to try to attack. I said, I want you to. Because as soon as you come out that door and you think you're going to hit me, God would allow you to drop dead right where you at. Taking the fire. That little girl stopped, thought about it, and turned around. Look out. The now. lady that was working with me said, you know what? She said, your whole facial expression, your eyes, and your very voice change whenever you 
you started talking. I said, I wasn't trying to put fear in her, but these kids got to learn that you can't continue to cuss out God's people because you don't know who they are. My Lord. You have no respect for nobody. No respect for elders. There was a time we didn't talk to old people any kind of way. Amen. We didn't do it. We reverenced who they were. You yes. know what I'm saying? Yes. It wasn't the fact that mom and dad put fear in you. You had to fear God in you. There's no fear for who God is anymore. We think we can live and do anything that we want to do because we big and bad enough to do it. Just because the law says that you can do it don't mean God's law say you can do it. I see no fear in <laughs> So, what are we going to do? What are we going to do? How can we ever get to greater when we're so busy in competition? There's no competition in God. We should be coming together. I worked with a lady, and me and her sat down and talked. When we first met each other, there was a difference between both of us, and we recognized that there was a difference. She said, but you know what, Miss Kim? She said, I just want to share something with you. She said, when you speak, just when you open your mouth, she said, from the top all the way down to the bottom, stop and hear what you got to say. Yes. She said, there's much respect for you. And when your name is called, no matter what you say, everybody stop to do it. Just like E.F. Hutton. When E.F. Hutton talks, they say, everybody listens. And I was like, you know what? I never paid any attention. She said, I don't know what it is. She said, but my God won't allow me not to come and help you. She said, I be praying sometimes, and I know your ship ain't got nobody on it. But God said, go help you. This lady in her <laughs> seventies, and she worked many hours. Mm -hmm. Many hours. But one of the benefits is, is that we recognize that our doctrine was different. We was learning a lot of the same things, but there were some things that she lived by that I don't live by. But we never knocked each other. We represented each other and we knew that we both belonged to the same God. When we get like that, we can go somewhere. <laughs> Only then can we tap into greater. Yes. Because now we started to become on one accord. Yeah. We know that there's no difference because you my sister. You <laughs> my brother. Yeah. I need to make sure that me and you can try the spirit. We can go by the word. You get what I'm saying? Mm -hmm. Because we was listening, we were talking, and we were saying some different stuff. But then when we looked at it, she said, you know what? That's the same thing that I've been learning. See, sometimes we don't listen to each other. Yeah. I had to tell my kids that on my job. You don't listen to each other. Mm -hmm. So therefore, you draw to a conclusion. That's right. And the conclusion that you come to it's never where y'all started out at. And I'm one of those people that I'm one of those people that I believe if I teach it to you, I got to try to live it in front of you. <laughs> so last night whenever I got in the car and I found out that my family was under attack, mm -hmm. I had to watch my response because I had to remember you are the teacher. So the teacher had to learn discipline themselves. Yes. We have to learn how to control what we do, because I ain't a lot of you come for my kids, that means you don't come for me. That means, as they say in the street, you sent for me. And since you sent for me, I'm finna come and serve her. But <laughs> I had to think about it, that's what I used to do. Yeah. My presumption now has to be different. My presentation has to be different. My wording has to be different. Apostle said, baby, you got anything to say? Nope, I ain't got nothing to say. He said, you sure you ain't got nothing to say? Yep, I'm sure I don't have anything. It's like, because see, sometimes we have to remember that when you're under attack, what you're under attack for. Because see, where there's change in the work that you're doing, because sometimes Satan know you over here and you working, right? Mm -hmm. You working with people that he seems to have felt that everybody in the Christian don't have now deemed no good. Yeah. You know, that's how we do. There's only a certain group, we know different than the Jews. There's only a certain group of people that we're just going to go to, right? Mm -hmm. well, because you don't act like me, you don't look like me, you don't talk like me. I can't come to you. You get what I'm saying? So yeah. now because of the fact you're working on his territory. Because mm -hmm. he knows that a lot of times things that we get into, we do it because we want God not to call for us and not to draw us, not to want us, right? right. We tend to do those things, right? Mm -hmm. And a lot of times these are people that grew up in the church that know the word. Mm -hmm. They know who God is. They just haven't establish a firm foundation in the relationship with just who he is. You get what I'm saying? Mm -hmm. See, there's a difference with some 
problem is we have a relationship, but whenever you don't have a foundation, you know when you start dating people, you have to build a foundation with them, right? Right. You have to learn how to be with them. So now you start learning what's good and what's bad about them. Can you deal with it when you not deal with it? Can you stay with this for a long period of time? Or can you not stay with it for a long period of time? Okay, now they done took off that old fake smile. Now they ain't really smiling no more. Can I deal with that? How can I bring that smile back? You get what I'm saying? Mm -hmm. So now that's what we have to do with Lord, the Lord. So whenever trials come, can I still stand? Because see what tends to happen when we first start off in our salvation walk. It seemed like God started opening all the doors for us, right? Yes. And I pray and I need it. God give it to me. That's no different than a newborn baby when we have it. You get what I'm saying? Mm -hmm. When we have a newborn baby, that baby say, yeah, we go and feed that baby, right? That baby say, yeah, we go dry that baby, right? Uh -huh. That baby go, yeah, we go, wait a minute, something wrong with this baby. I done dry the baby, I done gave the baby milk, and this baby still crying. As old people say, that baby colicky. So now we got to figure it out, right? So whenever we start out as new babies in Christ, what? guess what tends to happen? Now we start calling on the Lord. When we call on the Lord, we say, Lord, I need you to do this for me. What happened? God do it. You get what I'm saying? Mm -hmm. Sometimes we recognize and say, well, you know, the Lord did this for me. But sometimes we don't even recognize that it was God. You get what I'm saying? Because we just came into salvation, so we don't have a full understanding of who he is. You get what I'm saying? Mm -hmm. Are you going to talk to me? Well, come on. <laughs> We don't have the full understanding of who he is. So now that I'm learning, and he know that I'm learning, as whenever we start learning how to teach our kids how to walk. Yeah. I had one that decided they wanted to stand on their legs for a long time. Yeah. She been on her legs since she was two weeks old. Standing mm -hmm. up, wouldn't want to sit down, wouldn't want to lay down, wouldn't want yeah. to hold it. They wanted to be independent. Some of us in the Christian don't start it out as independent. You get what I'm saying? Come so on. So then you got to teach them how to weather the storm. Because like by the time she got six months, her legs had now started to be stronger. So now she wanted to start doing what she saw other people around her doing. Is that not what happened in the church? See, we, we can't on. get the greater works because some of the people that we done followed, that we started seeing how they were walking, never tapped into greater works. So how can we get into greater works? Because we never learned greater works right along. That's right. So when, how can we stand on our own legs and walk? Mm -hmm. What do you mean now? Can we really weather the storm? Because see, I sat down and I started thinking because I deal with a lot of children with mental health issues. And I started paying attention. How is it that so many kids can have so many mental health issues? But you know what I had to go back to? I had to go back to the word. The word said they become wiser, but weaker. I thought weaker. See, let me tell you something. Now you got to start teaching. You got to start thinking. Say it now. You got to start watching and paying attention. Because remember, I said sometimes we wear the storms, right? Yeah. So whenever we wear the storms, we have to go back and go back to the foundation of where we started with our relationship. Where my relationship started in the word. God took me up on the leaders that taught the word. So whenever I started thinking about it, wait a minute, I was a little dumbfounded, but it wasn't that I was dumbfounded, it was the immaturity in who he was that I didn't understand the real scripture. You get what I'm saying? Mm -hmm. He said wise but we and these kids are very wise, but they can't take anything. Are some of us in the church like that, right? Whenever the storms come, we're ready to just throw in a towel and give up and walk away from God, right or wrong. That's right, that's oh my right. God. I'm sorry. You I'm walk sorry. no get out of here. No, you are right. <laughs> Yes. We still run after. We still want it. We want to do what we got to do to get it, right or wrong. Mm -hmm. If we got to take it, we're going to take it, right? How many times you hear leaders teaching women that you can't take and put authority over something that belongs to somebody else? Mm -hmm. You can't pray to God and ask God to give you somebody else's husband. Yeah. They teach you that now, right? So you got a whole lot of people that's in the church because God did not give you that man. You still praying for that man. Yes. Yeah, oh, my God. Guess what happened? Look out, look out. You didn't understand that God said no. Mm -hmm. Now you don't wound up with him and you and him got more help than a woman that asked for heaven because God gave him to her, not you. That's right. He belonged to her. Mm -hmm. And God had equipped her to deal with what they was going to have to go through. But because you prayed and you asked for him, now you got him. Now you can't stand him. Now you don't want him. Now you don't move on. Now you can't take the things that go on. Now you got to have getting driven out of your mind. Oh my God, I got to get out of here. You, oh you're talking, you're talking, teach it, teach it, teach it. Sometimes we repent. God, because we want children so bad. That's one of the issues that sometimes as women we go through. Whenever we recognize that all our friends got families and they all getting married and they all doing this and they all doing that, we start 
desire. Somebody need to hear what you said. They, we start desiring it as women. You get what I'm saying? We don't hit the lonely phase. We don't got into our thirties. We don't got into our forties. I still ain't got no children. I don't have a husband. All my friends are getting married. Now God done allowed you to come in contact with Bojo because you don't have time in life to go through. Yeah. So you were supposed to recognize when Bojo came in. And the reason why I said Bojo because he hard headed as a dog. Mm -hmm. Because every time you and him try to go one step forward, y'all go 50 steps back. Come and on. You sitting there, you still trying to make a relationship with somebody that God did not give you. You still sitting You're there praying to ask God to give you a child that God did not say that this is ordained for you to have that child. Now yeah. you don't bought a child in the world and you stressing trying to figure out what's going on. You got to remember there's some things attached to the DNA. Mm. Mm. So you've been listening to me, Hattie. Something is repeating out here. Turn it off. It's repeating. So whenever we sit down and we think about it, now you got all types of trouble going on. But you sitting there saying, I know what I asked you for this, but did God ordain this for you? How can we go to greater? That's mama. We can't go to the grave because guess what? You just sat down and you watched what someone else did. Like yes. I said, I had one that walked early. She saw everybody around her walking, so she desired to walk. Okay. Guess what yeah. happened? She looked like a little person walking. Oh, I remember my uncle said, this is a crime and a shame. No baby that small should be walking. Mm -hmm. But she did. And she's been walking and talking ever since. But one thing I do know, the one that was lazy that did not walk, deal with a lot of stuff more than the one that walked early. Yep. There's a lot of things that we have to build and talk and encourage. That's what we have to do in the body of Christ. Mm -hmm. So sometimes I have to sit back and I have to think. Whenever we are under attack, that's because of the type yes. of people that we're going after. <laughs> we're not going after just a certain type of people that look like they got it going on. We're going after that person that look like they ain't got nothing going on. We're going that's after right. that person that look like nobody wants to deal with them. So therefore, because of the fact these are the people that we got to go after, guess what tends to happen? Satan want to attack. But that's see, right. the difference is, is that sometimes whenever he attacking, you got to learn how to be able to weather the storm. We got to be like a tree planted by the rivers of water. No, we can't do that because a lot of our roots are weak. Hey. Right now, they're saying that the, the ground is dry here in the state of Florida. Mm -hmm. That's why these fires that they have are just burning because we haven't had no water, real rain to come through here. So because we had no real rain, not even just the outside of the tree is dry, but the very roots are dry. Some of us got some dry roots. <laughs> Mm -hmm. We haven't been planted by living waters. You get what I'm saying? I look at every day whenever I go outside and I look at the lake that's in the middle of the complex where I work. It's mm -hmm. slowly drying up. Yes. You can see the ridges of where the water used to be and now there's no longer no water there. What's drying you up? Mm -hmm. Are we paying attention to look what's out going now. on? Or are we really looking at what's going on? Mm -hmm. Because we can't continue doing things like we used to do. Hmm. The Spirit of God has given a lot of knowledge for a lot of us. Yes. Are we really working the knowledge that was given? Amen. If he said that we would do greater works, how can we do greater works whenever we're not even tapping into doing greater works? Yes. Whenever you can't deal with when people talk about you and say, <coughs> they must be doing the same thing that they're doing. Because they said that you crying and whining and now you want to go hide who you are. But they didn't know that you was out there witnessing to somebody trying to get them to come to Christ. Look out, baby. Because you decided to go into the highways, the hedges, down in the trenches and the ditches. They're going to pull somebody else out. Mm -hmm. And because somebody rolled by and saw you. Mm -hmm. And the fact that you didn't have on a collar and you didn't have on a suit. Yeah. You had on some jock and pants and a t-shirt. That's me. Because sometimes we got to get dirty. That's right. Sometimes we have to go and talk to people when we don't want to talk. Mm -hmm. Sometimes we have to have conversation with people that nobody want to talk to. There's a young man my husband been talking to, and he has gravitated to my husband. And I'll never forget whenever the young lady, the woman that was working with me, and she said, your husband talks to him a lot. But she was taught in their doctrine. Mm-hmm. Bow the law. What happened to grace? Jesus came. Grace and mercy. <laughs> what happened to grace? So what happens whenever 
we still out here are acting reckless, but we looking at that man judging him. That's right. Both of us gonna wind up being in the same place if we ain't getting it right. But they didn't know. He said, "I want to do everything I can not to go to hell. I know what I did. I know how I did it. But I know what the word say, and I know what I was doing would send me to hell. So I found somebody, and that's my pastor now, as he called him. And my pastor gonna make sure that I don't go to hell because he got the right word. Are we really working? Or are we just a dressed up mess? I don't know about you, but he said greater works. I got some young ladies <coughs> gonna get out the way. Our words are powerful. Our words give life. And one of the biggest things that whenever I went through training, they were showing us that not everybody you wanna reach. That's right. Mm -hmm. But sometimes just the stuff that we say can play a seat. Mm -hmm. Because the last thing I say every night before I walk down that hallway and I say good night and I personally tell them good night by their name. <clears throat> right. Is what they realize is that now I got one set that was just acting ghetto hood, doing all types of stuff, cussing out everybody. But now I got another side that's sitting down thinking, I don't want to return back to that. Miss Kim said, I can live in the suburbs. I can change how I live. I can change how I talk. I can change how I respond. So much so that these girls and all the staff in the building only want to work with this one set of girls. Mm -hmm. But the girls that's over there that's acting like this, I got four of them not saying, I want to go to the suburbs. I know how to act. I know how to carry myself. If you give me a chance, I can show you, Miss Kima. See, sometimes, are we giving life or are we giving death to people? <laughs> Look out now. Mm. Mm -hmm. What somebody else thought was negative that I said, they sat back and they thought about it. They said, you know what, Miss Kim? I looked at it, and I looked at the situation. And whenever I looked at everything that was going on, what you did was you gave life to a dead situation. You now bought in what these kids really needed. Because from the top, when the top tell you, don't worry about it, they getting ready to get out of here soon. I said that conflicts with who I am. And it conflicts because I don't, I'm not a person that just give up. Yes. That's not what God called me in here for. I understand that there's an assignment for me in here. That he called me to somebody. So out of 18, I got 15. That said, I want to stay in the suburbs. I said in the suburbs, we eat different. Our mm -hmm. power is different. Look out, man. We respond to situations different. Mm -hmm. Whenever we're in the house of God, that's what we got to learn how to do. Our very taste is mm -hmm. different. The way we used to act, we don't act no more. We don't talk no more. You expressed it in the lesson that we talked about in changing of the God. We don't eat mm -hmm. like we used to eat. As the little girl said, how she used to have burritos. Because, see, sometimes these kids I come in contact with, families have been in and out of prison systems. Mm -hmm. So these kids only know these things. I said, baby, we don't eat like that no more. I said, over here, we eat real food. We eat shrimp and grits. <laughs> we eat filet me on. Look out. Because, see, if I catch you now, see, what tends to happen is, is that Satan trying to attack us when we're children. He tried to take the very innocence that we had. That's right. That's so right. once he take that, we trust nobody. You got to start off when you're young because if he can destroy you as a sapling, he can destroy you as a seed, he can snuff you out early, he already know. If he can catch you while you still young, he can now corrupt you. I've heard many people say that we're dealing with a lost generation. Are we dealing with a lost generation? Because my Bible says greater works. That's right. So that means I don't care how tough they is. God said I can do greater. You get what I'm saying? Mm -hmm. So before I give up on you, I'm going to speak life to you. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. And one thing I do know is he allowed me to see what I've been doing is working. Can we say that in the house of God? Come on. <laughs> you was wondering why we were going to see God take everything I do. Oh, no, I, I, I got you, though. Because there are many people that we come in contact with. They know I really want to deal with it. God didn't call me to that. You're right, he didn't. But his word equipped you for it. 
Are you going to use her? Or are you going to sit behind the four walls? Because see, ministry is not just in the four walls. We come in the four walls to energize each other, to equip each other, to go out for the next week. I used to laugh whenever I saw the Jehovah Witnesses come. But you know what I didn't pay attention to? Is that they would go and get their lessons, mm -hmm. get taught. Yeah. Then whenever they go on their witnessing journey, to go witness about who Jesus is to them, they didn't go up in the hand. They came out with their literature. That's right. They didn't yeah. come out two by themselves. They came three. out with two or three of them, like Christian said. And That's they right. knocked on the door to want to share the good news because that was the name of the thing, the watchtower. Mm -hmm. <laughs> they wanted to share the news of Jesus Christ, right? They wanted to tell about Jehovah. But no, they call it Jehovah. Because in the Bible it says Jehovah is the what? The greatest mm -hmm. name? It, it's, it's in there because I found it. Because I wanted to understand why they call him Jehovah. But then some of us, we call him Jehovah too. You might want to watch that. We call him Jehovah Jireh. Jehovah Nisi. See, he got many names. See, whenever we recognize he got many names, we're not going to knock each other. Because we all trying to get to where he's at. He said, I go to prepare a place. <laughs> so because he went to prepare a place, that means I got time to knock you for what you really think and what you believe. That means I still got to continue working. You get what I'm saying? Because every day that he put breath in this body, I have a chance to reign here. You get what I'm saying? I need you to catch it. I need you to understand. You can't put him in a box, Christian. Many years I put him in a box. We can't put him in a box. I remember sitting down talking to a Muslim lady. Me and her sat down, we talked. I found out we had a lot of similarities too. It was just some of her doctrine that I didn't agree with. Mm -hmm. But you know what? We could sit down and we could talk about the good news. You call it this, but I call it that. You get what I'm saying? I think who was it? Morgan Freeman went around the world mm -hmm. and he found all these stories <coughs> about the coming of Jesus because he wanted to understand the real Christmas story is what it's called, mm -hmm. the real Christmas story. But as he went around the world, there was many different names in many different areas that he went. But whenever he heard the story, the story wasn't never changed. It was the same story. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. <laughs> we gotta catch it, y'all. We can't beat each other up. The star is so sad to hear about how sick I'm pushing. What? <laughs> it was good to me. Amen. 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 We're grateful. Come on, give God a hand clap and praise. Amen. 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 We're grateful, grateful, grateful to God. I bless God this morning. I think Evangelist just wanted to take flight this morning. I pray God that God will give her the strength. He will replenish everything that she poured out to us. Thank God for all of you again that have joined us this morning. We praise God for each of you this morning, to my family, to all of you. We welcome you to our morning worship. This is the first Sunday of the month. Of March, the first quarter is getting ready to come to an end. It is the sixth day of this month. Three months into this year, six days of this month, and like my wife said on last Sunday, I wasn't here. She was getting ready to start worship on last Sunday, and I called us and listen. Uh, they get ready to take me down. Uh, they get ready to do. Uh, a procedure on me to open up the blockages that they found and because they found these blockages mm -hmm. they want to open it up they found some large blockages in the atrium part of my heart some small blockages in the lower part of my heart we had all kind of things and it's strange because we had people that we have been connected with and just disconnected all of a sudden and all of a sudden they uh, said that I shared some things but it was impossible for me to share some things with them because at one point they had disconnected from me, mm -hmm. uh, including my son. And when I saw what my son said, the only way for them to have been re-tagged in anything was that you had to start following me again, unbeknownst to me, because you had stopped following, you had blocked me. Mm -hmm. So 
it's amazing and all kind of things that have begun to transpire because you stopped doing what you did. You never said what it was that had transpired. Why am I saying that? Because my wife, right, we had all kind of attacks and all these things were taking place. All these things were happening. But what I like about it is that I had one of my doctors that saw me, one of the general practitioners, when he saw me that Sunday morning, he said, well, he said, well, Mr. Garrett, he said, I'll tell you like this here, whatever they find, I'll go on and I'll take care of you if you have to stay any longer after they go in. He said, but if they go in and they're able to do the procedure without having to put any stents in your heart, then we're going to let you go home. He said, but here's my final words. And he stopped at the door. He said, I'm praying now. I'm praying with you and I'm praying for you. And this was a medical profession, yes, mm -hmm. Dr. Perez. And I'm like, Doc, I like that. I said, you just said some good words. Yes. I said, and those words to me are better than just simply saying, well, we'll see what's going to happen. He said, no, I'm serious. I'm not just saying I'm praying for you. He said, I'm praying with you because I'm praying now as I talk to you and I'm praying Amen. for you. Amen. So for a medical professional, as he walking out the door in the hallway, uh, other professionals walking by, he said, and if I don't see you, just know my prayer is that you go home. And if not, I'll see you on Monday morning. And I'm grateful because all of those that were working with me somehow have been connected to the military, were in the military, were military doctors, and you would have thought that I was some kind of royal person or some kind of person that had been sitting in uh, some kind of seat of authority because they had well taken care of me, didn't have to worry about anything. And never told anybody that I was the man of God. God had everything set from their satellite uh, location, that 24-hour ER, all the way mm -hmm. to going to their primary location. So when you do it, what God said, do it in spite of, and God knows this is true. I got chills all over me. In spite of the attacks that come. Come on. Now remember, he said, we wrestle not with flesh and blood, but against principalities, against powers, against rulers, against spiritual wickedness in high places. And you heard what Evangelist said, when the attacks do come, are you ready for them? Come on. Because I'm always a praying man, and I pray in everything, even when you're talking to me, I'm praying while we're having conversation. And the sad part is, she said, instead of us coming together, we're always fighting for position. Come on. We're always trying to take somebody's <laughs> position. We always want to make it look like somebody don't know what they're doing and they're not in the position they're supposed to be in and they shouldn't be there. There are certain women that always want to upshore authority over a man. Mm -hmm. When we walk out of order, when we operate out of order, and there are some women that feel that they are not out of order, but you're out of the will of God. You're out of the order of God. And when you're out of the order of God, you're out of the will of God. Let me, let me put that in place real quick for you because my job since the age of three that God instructed me was to set it in order. So let me set in order for those of you that think that you're not out of the will of God, ladies. When you're out of God's order and you want to upshore authority over a man because of the position or because of the office you work in or operate in, your job is not the head of Come him on. because he's still the head because uh -huh. you're out of both uh, divine, ethnic, spiritual, natural order. I, I understand in the spirit there's no male or no female, but God's order will always trump what you think. Can I help y'all yeah. again? Yeah. So attacks came. And they kept coming. Mm -hmm. I'm pretty sure some folk glorified when they found out that I went to the hospital. We uh -huh. didn't publicize it because we didn't want nobody to know because we didn't want nobody praying against us. We just never said anything. And then my wife turned around and said it anyway. It don't bother me. You say what you want because when you decide to shoot your fiery darts, I uh -huh. always have my shield of faith. Come on. I always have my breastplate of righteousness on. You because I make sure that I'm in right standing. Because even the things that I said, I made sure my conscience was clear, first of all, before God. Mm -hmm. Second of all, before man. Yes. Third of all, I knew that I had not done nothing out of order. 
Yes. I knew that I had not done anything that suggested nor said that I purposely did you any wrong or any harm. Come on. I left the door open the first time for those to come and say, let's sit down and talk. Come on. Let's sit down and let's straighten it out. Yes. Y'all talk to me yes. now. Come on. And when the opportunity wasn't <laughs> there, now because you feel that it happened again, but you felt that I offended you. Mm -hmm. Right? Y'all talk to me. I'm the person, if you feel you're offended, but I will uh, begin to walk in the authority. I'm going to give you an opportunity because I ain't afraid of none of y'all because of who I am in the Lord and who the Lord already is in me. Amen. When it's time to stand on the authority that God gave me as his apostle. Mm -hmm. Because before they uh, went on and made the affirmation, I was already walking in that ark. Let me help y'all stand clear of some other stuff. I get tired of having to defend who I am in the Lord to anybody. I'm no different than the Apostle Paul when he had to defend his apostleship. I'm tired of you telling me you have to check my pedigree and check my record and check where I come from and check who it is and check my secession and all of this other stuff. First of all, mine were given to me before half of y'all got yours. Come on. Mm. Before you were with somebody that made you affirm and consecrated you. Come mm. on. Well, mine came from it didn't come earthly. Mm. Can I help y'all? Earthly was so that you can have your bonds by the earth to now signify what you need to have in your earth realm. Come on. That help y'all enough? Come on. So as we move forward, I'm grateful, grateful, grateful because even as God did what he did and spending the days that I spent Five days in the hospital. The reason why it turned out to be five is they didn't let me out until that Monday night about 10 o'clock. Yep. And while in there, all of these things, they were like, you're the best patient we have. What do you need? What do you want? We don't want you to leave, but we know you got to go home. Why am I saying all of that? Because if you think about everything that evangelists said and everything that's going on in the world now, the potential world war that is imminent before us, and one of my doctors that were, uh, my anesthesiologist, which is a doctor, his son, he had been prior service himself, and his son is a doctor in the service, and mm -hmm. while getting ready to give me the medicine that is needed to get me calm and to uh, make the area where they were getting ready to make the incision numb in my right inferior vena cable, we were talking and we were all enjoying ourselves. You know, I meant to tell you the one thing that they didn't have, we didn't have the music like I normally have where they said what kind of music going to listen to while we're doing this procedure. We were all talking about various things and talking about the Lord while they get ready to do the procedure. Right. Mm -hmm. We had no music. The music was our voice. Mm -hmm. And while I'm doing it, he said, you know, it's strange, he said, because Saturday, me and my son talking, my son called me this morning. He said, Dad, I just wanted to tell you I love you. I want you to pray for me. He said, okay, son, I do that all the time. He said, well, I'm getting ready to be deployed. They're shipping us out right now. I won't be able to talk to you until I get where I'm going. Right. My Lord. Said, they ain't got no word about being deployed. And this was last Sunday. His son is over in the Ukraine. In the heat of battle. We don't know what's going to happen from one moment to the next moment. Man. And this ain't something I heard. This is something that came out of the mouth of the doctor whose son was sent over because he was a doctor himself. Come on. They sent his unit over. They didn't tell them that they were getting ready to activate their unit and begin to deploy them. Yeah. Talk to a young lady named Brett. We had met. Remember the young lady Brett that we had saw at the 7 Eleven the other day when we stopped Christian? Yeah. How about I ran into her at the uh, Publix and uh, they were making sure because somebody in her family, they were getting ready to activate one of her family units wow. and yeah. institute a draft because that's what I heard as well that they get ready to do that. Wow. I need us to get to the place that you really know the Lord. Mm. Say, Not just speak of what you know, know, what you know, you get to know. but know. Yes. And you know, I was telling my son, I was laughing, you know, T.I. wrote the rap song, You Don't Know Me. When you see me in the streets, you don't know me. Y'all know the, the real version and y'all know the radio version. Mm -hmm. You know, you want to talk all the things you're talking, but you don't know me. Mm -hmm. 
You want to ask me certain things, but you don't know me. Come on. Hmm? Mm -hmm. You say I'm your friend, but you don't know me. Come on. It is funny that we talk about how much we know the Lord because the seven sons of Sceva, you know, one of the, another favorite text of Christians, they thought that they knew Jesus. Yes. They didn't know him very well because when they wanted to go and fight some demons, like some of y'all demon slaves. Come on. Some of y'all fighting demons and all these other things that y'all supposed to be these heavy hitters when it come down to casting out devils and come everything. On. Seven sons of Sceva found out that when you go up against forces that you don't know because you played around with other demons that went on and just got out to make people think that you knew what you were doing when they ran up against a real demon. Come on. They said, Jesus, I know. Paul, I know. You better say But you, I don't know. Yes. And jumped on them. Come on. Made them get out of their clothes and run out of the house, stop naked. Mm. You might want to be careful what you do. Yes. Mm -hmm. Yes. Because they didn't really know who Jesus was. They wanted to play with something that they didn't know what to do with because they want to come out. I adjure you in the name of Jesus. Come out the man. And that demon just had to stop and look at him like, really? Jesus. Yeah. You want to put your hand on this man's head and you want to wrestle him down on the ground? Y'all think yes. that all of this throwing up and looking at all of the stuff that come out, whether it's brown, white, or green, you think they're throwing up demons sometimes. Come on. You better speak. Right? Convolving at the mouth, foaming at the mouth. Come on. Y'all forget when to. Jesus got to the coast of the Gatherings in a place called Gad. That's why it was called the Gatherings, Mark chapter 5. When he got there, they recognized who Jesus was. Yes, Lord. All of the disciples had got off the ship before Jesus, and by the time Jesus got ready to get off, the young man came down out of the mountains, and his words were, because it disturbed this demons that was in him. Son of David, huh? Yes. That's right, thou son of David, why have thou come here to torment me? It's not my time yet. Do y'all recognize that demons are disturbed just by the very presence of the Lord, by the presence of Jesus? Let me help my wife understand. You understand when you really walk in the authority that God has given you through Jesus Christ and when you recognize the greater that he that is in you than he that is in the world, when you walk in that and you understand that you ask the Lord, you said now unto him that is able to do exceedingly abundantly greater that then you can ask think well by the power that worketh in you, as Paul said in Ephesians 3 and 20, when you walk in some place and because you have been in the presence of God, because you went in prayer, God brought you in his presence, and you have now the wealth there, you go walk in some places, and when you get there, just the very essence of who you are, and the smell of the presence of the Lord Jesus Christ will disrupt some things. Ain't gonna make them mad. Mm -hmm. You wondering why folk ready to argue, fuss, they're ready to cuss you out. They're looking at you like you stupid. They're telling you you gotta get out the store. Come on. Mm -hmm. That's why when my wife walk on the job, I say, you ain't recognize there's a lot of time these girls get disrupted because they're not getting disrupted with you. They're disrupted because the presence of the Lord in you have now disturbed the spirits that are on them and on them. On them and on them. In other words, those that have been operating through them Come now on. have now got so far on them that they can't recognize who they are. Come on. Mm -hmm. For those of you that have joined, y'all saw that the topic of the lesson said, the title of the message said, You don't know me. Mm -hmm. John chapter 14, beginning at verse 6 and ending off at a few of the following verses. That's where the message is. But if you ain't catching, I've already been talking about it because the yeah. magic has already opened up the way. So, I ain't really need to go no further than what I did, but start breaking it down. Because some of y'all just like Didymus, some of y'all just like Thomas. Come you on. know, you've been with him so long. You know, you've been there. You, you, you need to know how we gonna know. Gee, how we gonna know the Father? You mean to tell me you've been hanging out with me all this Come time, and you don't know who the Father is, and that I'm in the Father? Yes, Lord. 
Some of y'all been in church all your life you and don't that. recognize the power you got. You got your pastor and your apostle and your bishop and you got the prophet. You got the evangelist. You got the intercessor believing that they got to do all this for you because ah. you can't do it for yourself because you didn't take the time. You got the priest. You got the pope. You got the jurisdictional bishop, God. You feel it as though you can't walk in your own authority. Mm -hmm. But y'all won't sing the song, I'm walking in authority. What are you walking into that? My Lord. Mm -hmm. Come on, we not. Jesus said, you have not yet received anything of the Father because you ain't asked him nothing in my name. But whatever you ask in my name, what's his name? Jesus. You want to call him Yahshua. Yahshua. Come on. You forget in the Hebrew tongue that's the same name for Joshua. Yes. Yah. Yahweh. Come on. Huh? Yes. Gonna go back to the original, recognize that it has power. Yeah, he got many names. Yes. His name was Hollow. Evangelist, yes. like you said. Yes. Jews, or rather, talking about the uh, Jehovah's Witness, they didn't believe in calling Jesus Jesus because they thought Jesus was the same as Michael the Archangel. Uh -huh. Can I tell you a little bit about their religion? Yes. Huh? Yes. They felt that he was only a great prophet as all he was. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. So how do you really know Jesus? Did you meet him? Did he transform your life? Come on. You recognize that when you walk in places, my wife now have recognized that when you take on the nature and the character of your husband or take on the nature and the character of your wife, take on the nature and the character of your mother and your father, you begin to look just like them. Mm -hmm. How you look like them? Not because the visage of who you are, the very confidence of your face. The very character and how you carry yourself, people recognize who your mother is, who your father yes. is, yeah. who your wife is, who's your husband. Because mm -hmm. of how you carry yourself, how you <coughs> conduct yourself. And that's why they first called them Christians at Antioch. Come on. Because of the way they displayed what they displayed, the mannerism and their behavior. Right. Can people really say that you are a child of the king? You better Amen. say that. Do you really know? You don't know me. When they see you in the streets, do they know that you're a child of God because your car say blessed and highly favored? Yes. Blessed child of the Lord. Mm -hmm. Doesn't say hallelujah. Doesn't say child of the king. Come on. Huh? When they visit your social media page, Right. You the only that. reason why I didn't know that you're a child of God is because of all of the attached names you got. Mm -hmm. well, because they can see the display of the character and they recognize that you got character flaws, but your character flaws are outweighed by your character in Jesus Christ. Come on. Can I help y'all today? Yes, Lord. Amen. Eh? Come on. They know that every once in a while. Because the flesh tried to rise up. Mm -hmm. And the flesh will rise for those of you that think that it don't. I'm going to tell you, yes, I'm here to tell you, I don't care how anointed and how often yes. you stay before the Lord and how often you fast. As long as we still in this state and Jesus have not come back and reproved yes. the world, as he said in John 17, until he reproved the world of sin. In other words, he removed sin completely out of the world yes. and Satan is completely locked in hell forever with all those that decided that they were going to walk against God mm -hmm. and the angels. Uh -huh. Huh? Right. You don't know me. That's what Jesus said. Mm. Because if you knew him, you would keep his commandments. You would follow what he said. You wouldn't love people because they the same color as you. You will love folk even though they have decided that they want to lay down with the same gender as themselves. You say with love and kindness have I drawn thee. You will allow the love of God now to draw them. And with love and kindness you will begin to now show them how to begin to come out 
how to begin to discipline their flesh, how to begin to submit themselves to the Lord to now break off. Because just because you may not be laying down with a man and you a man and you laying down with a woman and you a woman, you still got desire to lay down with the opposite as often as you can. Come on. Let me help some of y'all out there. You have a whole lot of eye candy that you lay with it because you have not went to bed with them. You went to bed with them in your head, sleeping with two people <laughs> while you're in the same bed because you're sleeping with them in your head. Come on. Can I help y'all? Amen. Amen. You figure because you ain't doing it in the physical. You emotionally tied to them and laid with them and played with them. You skipping and dipping, tripping and flipping. Well. Mm -hmm. uh, if you know him, you bring him in subjection. Uh, Y'all talk to me. Yes, sir. right. You, you right. Mm. Hallelujah. When we look at what's going on in the world, mm -hmm. and we recognize all of these things, not only did Thomas do that, but in this text, it was old Philip. Mm -hmm. You had two people that did not believe. Come on. I use Thomas because Thomas in the 20th chapter of the gospel, according to John, in John accounts of what happened, after Jesus had rose, he didn't want to believe that Jesus had got up because he wasn't there when he first appeared. Mm -hmm. Philip wanted to know if God was real because he wanted Jesus to show him, and yet he seen God every time he saw Jesus. Mm -hmm. Come on. Some people don't believe that you got the Holy Ghost because they can't see the Holy Ghost. Mm -hmm. Y'all talk to me now. That's yes. true. That's true. To come back down for a brief moment because the authority that's spoken. Now let me minister to you because see some people don't believe you saved just because they don't see the spirit of the Lord. Come on. Mm -hmm. And some people want to prove some things. Yes. You ain't got to prove a whole lot to nobody. Mm -hmm. People want you to prove to them that you got the presence of the Lord in your life. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. You got to remember in the gospel of Matthew and the gospel of Luke. Satan did the same thing to Jesus while he was in the wilderness. He was led or guided by the Spirit into the wilderness for 40 days and 40 nights to pray. Right. Hmm? Yes. After he had been baptized, after he had gave the signification of the death we had to die by in order to become a part of who he was to establish the new covenant that would come thereby, because in order to now be reborn, we had to die. And the death that he would get ready to die by, and the resurrection that was going to come by, because he had to be buried in the earth and then be rose on the third day. Mm -hmm. Hmm? Mm -hmm. Look at this thing. While he was there, and while he was in the water, he come up. Then you got those that said, you got theologians, you got great writers, you got annotated writers that write in annotation. And I feel somebody in my left side, right around underneath my heart. Let me help you understand, Jesus already had the Holy Ghost. The signification was that all three were present at his baptism. All three were present to show you that your high priest was ready. If you knew him, the day that your mouth confessed was the day that the Holy Spirit rested upon you, washed you, blood of Jesus cleansed you, filled you. Y'all talk to me now. Mm -hmm. All right. You were baptized in the Spirit and filled at the same time. It empowered you to be able to now not just walk right, talk right, live right, act right, but it activated everything that he had put in your earth and vessel. Mm -hmm. Everything that had been disturbed by the genealogical DNA that ran through your veins on both sides. Mm -hmm. Y'all talk to me. Y'all heard that evangelist said earlier because of the DNA. Is why some things are the way it are and why some folks stop the way they stop, right? Mm -hmm. And because you feel that you ain't got no mama because mama gave you up. Mama died during childbirth. Hmm? Yes. Mama was a drug addict and the system had to take you and you had to go through foster care or one of your grandmothers or you were the product of incest, Come the on. product of rape. Yes. Y'all talk to me, huh? 
And here now you're trying to figure out what it is you're supposed to do. It, it, it begins to now damage your mind, your emotions, your mentality, your psychological well-being of how to begin to deduce how to move forward because you were still bothered by what happened. And every time you looked at a woman or looked at a man because of what happened or because your aunt or your mama found themselves in a state of mind where it was altered by some other kind of chemical that Call them to do something to you. You are now trying to figure out how am I to be about God bending and if God is real, but you knew he was because he could have allowed death to overtake you. He could have put you in a mental state where you were incapable of being able to say anything and talk about how real you were, but you know him. Mm -hmm. Y'all talk to me now. Y'all done got quiet on me now. See, when you know him, because even being molested as a child, God had to remind me I was there. <clears throat> right? My question to God, if you were there, why did you allow? Mm -hmm. Well, there were going to be others just like you that were going to have to be able to come out. You were going to have to run into others that still going through it, those that been going through it, chose some other paths. But I didn't allow you to choose some path. I chose a path that I wanted to make some proof that prove what I was. But God said, that ain't what I chose. I'm going to let you go down there, but I need you to understand because you're going to run into some of those. But that's not what I want you to do. And while I'm keeping you, I need you to understand. Well... When you begin to become relative and relate to who he is, you don't have to ask him to show you anything. But every now and then, he'll show you who he is by how he allow you to live. Mm -hmm. mm -hmm. Y'all talk to me. Mm -hmm. And sometimes the best thing to do is just believe. Amen. Read the text. From verse 6 to verse number 14, you'll find what Jesus had to say. Mm hmm, mm -hmm. That's why he said in verse 12, you heard evangelist read, he said, Verily I say uh -huh. unto you, he that believeth on me, the works that I do, shall he do also. And greater works than these shall he do, because I go to the Father. I go unto the Father. I go back from whence I came. But notice he has said to Philip, he said, listen, Jesus said unto him, have I been so long time with you, and yet Hast thou not known me, Philip? He that have seen me have seen the Father. You have been with me so long. You mean to tell me some of y'all don't even know your own mama. Some Come of y'all don't know your own daddy. Some of y'all don't know your own father. You don't know your own sister and brother. You know of them, but you don't know them. <clears throat> The sad part is you know of God, but you don't know God. You know of Christ, but you don't know Christ. You don't read about him, but you really don't know him because you really haven't taken the time to establish a real intimate relationship with him because Jesus said, no longer do I call you disciples, but I call you my friend because a friend knows everything. He's going to share himself with you. Right? Some of y'all got wives and husbands and you got best friends outside of your wife and your husband and they know more about what you think, how you think, why you think, what you feel, why you feel, what's going on with you, why it's going on with you, what's got you in the place that you are. And your wife or husband have no active clue. Mm -hmm. And although Jesus know everything about us, he made us and know all about us, he still wants us to sit down and have a conversation with him. Yes, sir. Come on. He know you, but you don't know him. Mm -hmm. mm. You're wondering why your relationships are the way that they are because you have a relationship, but not a relationship. Come on. <clears throat> you wonder why your seeds are always rocking. And other folk, they can have problems going on in their life, but it seems like their waters are always calm. Yes. They took the time to speak with the Lord and they was able to stand up on the bow of their ship and say, Peace, be still. Come on. And their winds come down. Their lightning stop flashing. Oh, Amen. Their thunder stop roaring. Because they took authority over what was going on. They settled down. The man took his rightful place in the headship. Amen. Why it began to operate with him. They came together instead of coming against each other. Right. Mm -hmm. They led together instead of trying to now lead apart and fight for the headship. 
So Philip was told by Jesus, if you know him, mm -hmm. you're able to speak those things as though they are, even though they're not, because you can now understand why he says, so then faith coming by hearing, hearing by the word of God. You can understand where he says now, faith is the substance of things uh -huh. hoped for, the evidence of things not yeah. seen. Now, yeah. faith. You can understand how the elders obtained good report. Yes, you can understand that your gift of faith can speak things into existence. Come on. You can understand when you know him, your faith can move your mouth. Yes, Lord. You can understand that when you know him, you recognize that some things that he just needs you to go through, you must need go through your Samaria area. Remember, Jesus said, I must need pass through Samaria. Because in Samaria there was a Samarian woman that was cousin to the Jews that had to hear the word of God come and on. come out of what she was in because yes. she had had five men as her husband that wasn't hers and the one she had wasn't her. Come on. She had to go run spread tending it all over town. Mm -hmm. Yep. Because he asked her so. She told him no. She ran telling it all over town. Y'all quit to run telling if it's not the right one asking for something. Come on. Come on. But if it's the right one, don't nobody know but you and God. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. Come on. Because who you want to ask for something, they won't ask. Because they don't want it. Mm -hmm. Because they don't want it, you lie on it. Come on. Right. Y'all talk to me now. Come on, I'm talking with you. When you know him. You allow yourself to learn how to discipline mental, psychological, oh. conscious, and subconscious area. And you won't have to worry about in your unconscious state of being things now rising up to the surface. Oh. You do realize that in your unconscious state, what's in the conscious state of mind come up to the surface. Yes. Y'all recognize you can clean some dishes and when those dishes sit down and it get hot enough, what happens? The smell that had been set in the poles now begin to permeate out. What's really in you that you have not really cleaned out of you will now smell through you. Mm -hmm. You said you ain't stopped. You stopped drinking at 8 o'clock. You know you lied when you ain't stopped drinking until 12 o'clock. And here now is 7 o'clock. And the heat is on, and because the heat is on, mm -hmm. now you now got the smell of alcohol coming out of your pores. Yes, sir. You said you were no longer uh, shooting up. Yes, sir. You were using meth. Mm -hmm. You were using ice. Mm -hmm. You were no longer on black top. Mm -hmm. Yes. You didn't have no Reggie or no Lyle. Come on. Huh? Yes, you didn't have no crack. You didn't get no bolo. Come on. You didn't start five lines. Come on. Huh? Yes, Lord. Y'all talk to me, but your mannerism and behavior, and all of a sudden as some things begin to show, your eyes, your tweaking, your nose start bleeding. Mm -hmm. Teeth start falling out. Y'all talk to me now. Yes. Yeah, mm. You right about that, preacher? There are certain coughs, nails start falling off, skin start looking different, eyes are sunk in. Yeah, you begin to have uh, bipolar, schizophrenic, panic, uh -huh. depression. You begin to have disassociating disorders. You begin to uh, twitch like you got Tourette's syndrome. Yes, Lord. Y'all talk to me. Yes. Right. When you know him, he allow your body to detox. You begin to have memory loss. Mm -hmm. When you know the Lord, he bring all these things back in balance because you become just like the woman with the issue of blood. Yes. The doors of the church are open because I'm trying to help you today. Evangelist already ministered to you. She already evangelized to you. So now I'm preaching to you and I'm giving you what God needs you to have because see if we know the Lord, then guess what would happen? The body of baptized believers, we wouldn't be fighting against each other. We wouldn't be trying to see who got the best association, who Come got on. the best fellowship, who's the greatest apostle, who's the greatest bishop, who's Come the greatest on. prophet, who got the right prophetic word, who can lay hands, who got the best gift, yes. who can create the greatest of miracles, yes. who got the greatest uh, word, who can give the greatest exegesis and isogesis, who got the greatest of knowledge. We'll be coming together and I guarantee you if we knew him like we should, 
But we give more popularity to things that are immoral, that we are made moral. Yes. I love everybody. But I also know that in order to get to heaven, there's some things that I still got to manage in my flesh. Yes, Lord. In my life. In my life. You hear me? Yes, Lord. You don't think that Satan tried to come at me because of what I like, what I enjoyed, what I played around with, how I played around with it, just like those that made the choices that they made and still making it living in? Amen. Just like you got to battle with the flesh. Yes, I do. And got to discipline the flesh. Come on. Come on. Mm hmm? I need y'all to catch it. Come on. You all you bishops and apostles and on, all you bishop. powerful anointed folk. Come on. Those are the ones that he won't go after. The ones that ain't hollering at. They got better strength than us. Come on. Why? Because they recognize that that boy want to keep them trapped. Yes. Mm -hmm. You caught. You trapped. You caught up in the middle of a two-way love affair, and only you and God know it while you perpetrate the folk that you ain't playing around. Come on. If you know it, because you don't know me. Mm -hmm. And T.I. said, if you see me in the street, you're going to be pistol popping. Hmm? My Lord. You only know that. It's going to be chopper chopper, pistol popping. What's going to happen is Jesus is going to say, I made you, but I know you're not. My Lord. He's going to say, depart from me, ye workers of iniquity, in mm. eternal damnation. Mm. That's going to be your chopper chopper mm. pistol popping. Mm. Mm -hmm. Did y'all catch that? Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. My Lord. Because when he see you before the great white throne, mm. and he reads your pedigree back off to you, mm -hmm. and he begin to open up the three books, He's going to open up this Bible that some of y'all don't want to read and y'all got a problem with. Come on. When he opened up the book of remembrance and he began to tell you of everything that you ever did, all of us. Then he opened up the book of life and your name ain't in it. It's going to be chopper chopper, pistol pop. Because he's going to say, I made you. Yes, I did. But I don't know you. Come on. Now, remove yourself in the everlasting damnation. And in hell, you're going to lift your eyes. And that's where you're going to reside all eternity. Yes, Lord. You're going to reside in the final death, eternal death. Mm -hmm. You'll be eternally separated from God. Mama. Won't be no gulf fixed between you and Lazarus. Come on. You won't be able to say, Lord, let somebody dip their finger. Mm -hmm. Yes. Because you had an opportunity to know him. Yes. And all of us that are preaching inclusion the wrong way. Mm -hmm. Yeah, we're all included in salvation. Yes. But in that inclusion, there's some coming out. Yes. I, I'm trying to get to the, the invitation. I, I'm trying to get you to understand that Jesus is saying, come unto me, all you that labor the heaven laden, and, and I give you rest. But in order to get to rest, you got to come out. The first word is come. C-O-M-E, you got to come to it. Now, when you come, he said, all ye, everybody. Mm -hmm. Oh, let me say it like they say the word, everybody. That means gay, lesbian, queer, tranny, whole, Come on. huh? Come on. Cheater, murderer, molester, yep. thief, thief, liar, liar. Mm. those that are in the incest. Yes. You married your first cousin, you married your mama, Come you married on. your stepmama, married your stepdaddy, yes, married your brother. Come on. Come on, y'all. He said, all oh, ye. Right. That labor the heavy lady. You got stuff don't nobody know about. You slept with your sister, y'all played around and y'all figured on. out. Y'all wonder what was going on and y'all done some things and y'all don't want mama to know. Come on. Huh? Yeah. You was after your daddy, your stepdaddy, and you don't want nobody to know after your mama, your stepmama. Mm -hmm. Y'all talk to me now. Yes, yes. Your first cousin? Yes. I need y'all to get it. Mm -hmm. Let me break it down for you. Come on. Mama didn't know you were smoking dope, playing around with dope. Come on. Mm -hmm. You laid with your grandpa because you saw him. Mm -hmm. Huh? Mm -hmm. You tried a woman out, tried a man out. Mm -hmm. Y'all talk to me now. Amen. Your husband don't know you have been sleeping with your boss and that's the reason why you got all the promotion. Mm -hmm. Your wife don't know that's the reason why you got all the raises on the job because your boss was a woman. Y'all talk to me now. Yes. You going home, and that's why you ain't won't touch him at night. Huh? Yes. Put
putting your miles in places that you know you wouldn't put them. Where your spouse wants you to put them, you won't because of man and arguments. Y'all talk to me now. I need y'all to get it. All you that live in a heaven land, and I give you rest. Now he gonna give your mind, your conscious state, your subconscious state, your soul, your emotion. He gonna put you at a place where you affectionately at rest. You satisfied with the passion you with. Mm -hmm. Now you can give all yourself to them. And when you say, I give myself away, some of y'all been giving yourself away to a whole lot of stuff. Sometimes it ain't got nothing to do with your body being given. It's sometimes got to do with your mind, your honor, your respect. Uh oh. Y'all thought I was just talking about one thing there. Mm -hmm. Let me help you where it's going. If you know him, he brings you back to self esteem and self respect. Yes, Lord. Because when you evaluate and you know the Lord, you learn of him. He said, Take my yoke upon you, you see it. When you see what you think is condemning you, what happens is it condemns what you did. It don't condemn you. So now it causes a condemning of what you did, how you did, where yes. you did, who you did it with. So that now it causes conviction so that you can get converted. Yes. Uh -oh. Can I help y'all? Did y'all catch that? Yeah. It condemns the act of sin. Yeah. It don't condemn you. Once that act of sin has been condemned, it should cause a conviction. Yes, the conviction means now I, I recognize it. What can I do? And I need to now gain the strength of it. And when that conviction comes now, conversion means now I change what happened. I change the elements of it. I remove what is the rudiments that keep bringing it about. Yes, Lord. And I take power and authority over it. I call it by its name. I let them know they have no longer access to me. One of our sons in the ministry last night said he had to cut off some folk. He had to cut somebody off because of how they came at the family that he loved. And I, he said, I got to block them. I, said, I didn't like what they said. And they came out of wrong. And, oh, no, you don't do that. Wait a minute. I don't understand. I got a problem. I had to block them. I had to shut them off. And I remember shut them off forever. I called them and told them. I left them a message and told them. And then I blocked them. Do you do that? Come on. Mm. No. Reason why you that because they were convicted in themselves. They felt bad. They were hurt. Amen. Do you feel like that when somebody do that about somebody that you care about? Come on. Mm -hmm. Come on. Amen. He said, "Learn him." He said, "I'm low." And meek and hard. He said, look at here. First of all, I need you to catch this here. Yeah. Let me put it plain and simple. It, it ain't hard for you to understand it. Mm -hmm. He said, I ain't so high that you can't get next to me. Come on. Amen. He said, then while you're learning me, he said, you're going to find rest for your soul. Mm -hmm. Your soul is going to find some rest. Mm -hmm. Told you the doors of the church are open. Amen. He said, my yoke is easy. He said, now why are you living for me? Here's what's going to happen. They're going to still come back. They're still going to try to bombard you. Mm -hmm. They're still going to try to take control of you. They're going to do what's like going on in the Ukraine. They're going to be like Putin and they're going to try to make you think what's going on ain't going on. They're going to try to make you think that it's all about one thing when it ain't that. Mm -hmm. They're going to try to make you think that they really care about you when they really don't. They got the Ukraine thing that the Nazis is trying to take them over. That's not what's going on, right? Yeah. There ain't nothing about no Nazis, but it's all about trying to take power because what they want is the nuclear energy that they have. They want all what they got there so that they can now try to be the superpower in the world. And do you listen to really what they're talking about in the news? They're talking about how Putin is really losing his mind. He sounds just like Nebuchadnezzar when you don't want to bow to God and don't want to recognize God as giving you the authority that you have. Am I right about it? Yeah. God started to drive Putin out of his mind. And all of the networks are now recognized and they realize and even he himself realized that there's some things that are out of order. So he said, my yoke is easy. So while you're going through it, ain't going to be a heavy weight like everybody trying to put this weight on you. Some of you leaders are putting a lot of weight on those that are following what God has called you to do. You are not God. 
You're not Christ. You're not the Holy Ghost. Your job is to give them, feed them with knowledge and understanding. Can I set it in order to us leaders? Our job is to feed them with knowledge and understanding. You're only in the steep to take this word and give it to them to give them an understanding of how to leave from this earth to get to bright glory. He said that my burdens are light. Mm -hmm. That's the simple short version of what happens in Matthew 11, chapter, chapter 11, verse 28 and 30. We done went to the country. <laughs> you don't know me. Then there's a song in the world say, if you don't know me by now, you'll never ever know me. Today you should have got to know him better than you knew him before. The reason why God gave that topic because so many times we say we know the Lord and when we get ourselves in some of the situations that we got to fight. Because the weapons of our warfare are not coins. They are mighty through God to the pulling down the stronghold. See if you know him, when these strongholds try to bound you. Remember Jesus had gave the illustration. He said, listen, the parable talked about if the strong man knew the hour. If the man of the house knew the hour that the strong man was going to come in and break into the house. He would have been prepared. See, you don't know when the enemy is going to come and attack. Come on. Am I right about it? Right. But because you don't, you got to always be ready. Say, so you don't know the day nor the hour when the Son of Man come, but be ye also ready. You don't know when the enemy is going to attack you. You don't know how Satan going to come at you. My grandmother and them say, you don't know how sweet foot going to come. Mm -hmm. <clears throat> Am I right? Y'all talk to me. Don't get quiet even now. I'm trying to show you. If you didn't know him, here's some area because the weapon, we walk in the flesh, but we don't walk in the flesh. See, some of y'all mouths get beside you. Well, Just because you don't use vulgarity and you don't on. use cuss words, you got generic cuss words and you yes, still sir. tell folk off. Yes, yes, yes. Mm -hmm. Am I right about it? Yes. Then you want to pray against folk and say, that's why the Lord don't get them and the Lord this and the Lord that and I pray the Lord this and I pray the Lord that. Watch your mouth. Watch it. Watch it. Can I help y'all today? Come on. So by now you ought to know the Lord better. And as the old preachers will say, you ought to know the Lord and the pardon of your sins now. Mm. Because there's still some things in our flesh that got to come out. And sometimes we got to rewash the dishes. We got to get rid of the residue. Every now and then I had a coffee mug this morning and <laughs> I asked my wife, why my coffee mug smell like something don't smell like? She said, I don't smell what you smell. I smell the coffee. I'm saying that being funny, but I'm being serious. I said, baby, smell it. My son said, yeah, pop, I smell it. She said, well, let me give you a different cup. And when she gave me a different cup with my coffee, and my coffee smelled like coffee. It didn't smell like what was ever in the cup because when it was the towel that was used to wash it, it smelled like what was ever on the top. Right. Y'all talk to me now. Right. It had the residue. That's what happened with us in our life because of the things we're around. Watch the transfer of spirit. Watch who you've been around. Watch who you let touch you. My kids always want to rub on my shoulder, touch my hand. Hold up. Don't know who you've been around today. Mm. Don't know what you've been doing today. My daughter say I'm cold and want to rub on my hold up. I got to get up to minister the word of God. I don't need nothing disrupting and interfering with where God wants me to go. Ain't that I don't love you, but I need to stay in tune because my mind is in the place where I need to hear from the Lord. Preachers, be careful when folk want to come and interrupt you while you're in the place where you're hearing from God because they can block, hinder, or stop the flow of what God is trying to tell you to get to his people. Amen. And when I say preachers, I'm talking about all of us because he gave us this ministry of reconciliation because see, some of y'all think I'm just talking about the preacher that's getting up to preach the word. I'm talking about the bishop. I'm talking about the pastor. I'm talking about the evangelist. I'm talking about the prophet. I'm talking about the teacher. I'm talking about all of us because it's your job. Now when the brother's overtaken in a fault, ye with your spirit. See, I'm giving you some simple familiar ones that you ought to understand. When you know him, this is what you do. You restore such a one. When you know him, you understand, you continue in his word, and you are his disciples indeed, and you know the truth, and the truth make you free. Mm. See, if you set free, there's a possibility, there's an opportunity. There's a chance that you can go back and be in prison again. But when you're made free, mm -hmm. 
you ain't got to worry about it. Because see, if you get a governor pardon, you can go back to jail for the same thing. Right. When there's a presidential pardon, there's no way you're going back to jail. Amen. Do y'all understand that? Yes. Uh -huh. When Jesus pardoned us at Calvary, our sins cannot put us in prison unless we allow them to do it. Yes. Paul said, who would deliver me from the burden of this flesh? From the bondage of this sin? Jesus did. Yes. Uh -huh. I ain't got to worry about carrying this no more. So when I know him, I understand with my mind I serve the Lord God. With my flesh, I serve the Lord sin. What do you mean? Not that I'm going to serve God in my mind and I do what I want in my flesh. I recognize that my flesh will try to now do what it want to do. Amen. But I got to bring it in subjection. Amen. Bring it up. Uh, 1 Corinthians chapter 9, Paul says, I buffet my flesh daily. See, at that point, he literally did it. But see, here's what figuratively, we got to recognize the things that try to carry us down into the roads of sin, yes. the pleasures that we like, yes. the things that we enjoy. It's ours to offer, y'all. I'm trying to help y'all get it because when you know it, you know how to now set up your strategy. Y'all know how to strategize when y'all want to get what you want. Yes. Children know how to do it, don't they? Yes, they, do. they know how to play their parents real good. You ain't learn how to play against your sin while your sin playing against Come you. On. Your hungers and your desires and your pleasures know how to set you up real good, don't they? Yes. Mm -hmm. So Jesus is simply saying, I've been with you all this time. And you mean to tell me you don't know me? You done seen my father when you seen me. Mm -hmm. His actions, his mannerism, his behavior. When I stood up against the things that happened in the temple, you saw how my father would respond. When I flipped the tables over. Some of y'all need to turn some of these tables over in the churches y'all in. Mm -hmm. Y'all will catch that in the morning. Amen. Set it in order. So God bless you. God keep you. We thank you today and we pray God would now send his healing upon the land. Pray God for our president. We even pray for President Putin that God would begin to move upon his heart because the talks that they had of ceasefires, they didn't stop the ceasefires, where he had attacked villages where civilians are at, not where the armies are at, not where those that have armed themselves to fight against him is at. So we pray, God, for those that have been in harm's way, those that are in harm's way, those that are going to battle to fight against them and protect themselves. And I want y'all to check this out. This is a small country that don't have a whole lot of arms. But I want y'all to recognize how powerful God is with them. This big old army from Russia went against the people. Come he on! Thought he was going to go in and Say get a bullet, and they done stopped him. Yes. So you think great is he that is in you? Come on. Yes. He just knew he was going to yes. overthrow them. Yes. And these little small army people that ain't got the right equipment to fight him, to stop them, Come and they equipment that's supposed to be the best equipment in the world while he bragging, got to shut their equipment down. Yes. So that tell me they got some, I got a prayer, grandmother. Come on. Yes. I got a prayer, brother. Yes. Somebody praying in the Ukraine. Yes. And the uranium that's over there that produces the stuff that they need to make nuclear weapons is what uh, Putin wants because, see, it takes uranium and plutonium to make uh, nuclear oh, weapons. Yeah. Yes. That's what he wants. Mm -hmm. yes. These simple people, these people that picked up rifles, mm -hmm. not AKs, mm -hmm. not M16s, not M14s. Come on. They done pick up regular rifles and everything they can to fight this army and they done held them all. That's right, alcohol and bottles can beat the devil out of them. My mind said another word. I'm <laughs> being honest, and they whipping their tail. Yes. Amen. Bruce Lee said in Return of the Dragon, Dragon whips his tail. Mm -hmm. And they whipping their tail. Mm -hmm. Why? Because when God is for you, who can be against you? Come on. That's what Paul said in his letter to the believers at Rome, chapter 8, verse 35. When God is for you, who can be against you? They went against somebody that hadn't done them no wrong. And they were already ready because of their relationship. When you know God and the attack come, 
It didn't mean nothing was going to get destroyed. Let me help y'all understand. When the Come attack on. comes, some things going to get destroyed. When the attack came, it attacked my body because they wanted to say, see, I know the Lord and they came at me wrong because they came at me wrong. That's why they wind up in the hospital. That's why they got problems. Now, what they found out that over a period of time, some plaque had built up and the doctors that did what they did last year didn't catch it because, see, seven months ago, which was last year, in, in what, August, I believe it was, went in the hospital at the VA and the same test that they ran, I looked at what Dr. Uh, uh, what in their better had shown myself the same thing that the VA showed me last year and then the same area that was affected and they said it wasn't nothing there and it was wide open. He said, no, he said, no, John, he said, Rev, let me tell you. And I never told the man, I forgot to tell you, Dr. Ledbetter better call me Rev to him. Like, I never told the man I was a preacher. He said, no, Rev, if this is what you saw last year, he said, this is the top part of your heart. I said, yeah, that's where the atrium at. He said, here's the body. I said, yeah, that's where the left ventricle is. I'm going to the left ventricle on the back side of the left ventricle. I, he said, well, you know, I said, y'all know what to read, Doc, let me tell you. He said, well, the atrium up here, it's blocked real bad. Look at the blood flow. He said, you got some serious blocking. I said, that was on the test when they did that at the VA last year. I said, they did that thing seven months ago. And they said, what, no blockage? He said, yeah. <laughs> he said, that will cause you a problem. That's why you had them sharp pains in your left. So when folk think that they done prayed for the Lord to whip you, hurt you, attack you, nah, partner, that was already there. Mm -hmm. But what God needed was me to get in front of some folk that needed to see me. And my wife was right. I'm going to stop because I done got excited. She said, every time the Lord sees you on vacation, mm -hmm. you come back ready to tear things up. So I'm going to turn it over to Evangelist. The Spirit of the Lord done left. He's still here, but he ain't. This is John right now, so I'm going to move out of the way because John excited from what the Spirit is doing. So John going to move because the Spirit of the Lord has moved. So John going to get out of the way. So I pray you got your word from the Lord today. And as we get ready to go, those of you that want to give, yes, you can give at uh, dollar sign Bishop JG. Please put in uh, the notation, what is it for, whether it's a seed, whether it's a love offering. As my son said, he got a love offering. Uh, whether it is tied, uh, whether it's something to go towards the church itself. The reason why we're using that cash app, again, I cash app for the church had been compromised twice and they wouldn't give the church another cash out. I don't take none of the money. Everything goes towards the ministry. Uh, we're in process now. I just need to let y'all know this, of getting a building to move everything out of our house. We have enough room in our house for those of you that may want to come while we're here in the Land Lakes area uh, to come and fellowship with us in person. Uh, I have my Hammond C3 set up. Uh, somebody know how to play. Uh, we do sing because we can sing, and I'm tired of playing these music in the background because we can sing. Amen. So if you can play, you're more than welcome to come. Come grow with us. Bible class is every Wednesday at 7 p.m. Sunday service right now is every Sunday at 12 p.m. So we're just trying to do what the Lord called us to do. We ain't in competition with nobody, so let me help y'all understand. We ain't trying to take nobody's fault. If God has called you to shepherd and grow with shepherd, then follow the voice of the Lord. Amen. We're here to grow with every church, with every pastor, with every leader. That's what God called me to do. Amen. God ain't called me to fight with you leaders. Amen. But if you won't fight with me, I'm not going to fight with you. I will not be bothered with you, Amen. but I will talk with you. I will say hey to you, and that's all I'm going to say to you. Amen. God bless you. God bless you, evangelists. Well, if all hearts and minds are clear, Apostle has given the invitation. So we thank God, we thank God, we thank God. The cash app has been pinned in the comment area so that you can see if you missed what was said. So please, please, please. I pray that you found, heard, heard, listen, something that was said today that touched the heart and the mind, that God will go with you, be with you throughout this week. We love you, we love you, we love you. Father, in the name of Jesus, we say thank you. We say thank you for the word that was delivered on today. We say thank you for your spirit and your presence that was in this place today. 
We ask you that you be with your people. We thank you for every home that has been represented, that decided to tune in with us on today, oh God. Now that we ask you that you let the words that has been spoken, the seeds that has been planted, we ask you that they be watered by the Spirit of God. We ask you that you touch every home, that grant what is needed for this day and this time. We ask you that you be with your people that are going through in this time, oh God. We ask you that you provide shelter for our family, our friends, our brothers and our sisters and our loved ones. We ask you to continue to make ways out of no ways. Yes, we Lord. ask you that you continue to guide them in the path that you would have them to go. We ask you that you continue to lead them. In Jesus' name I pray. Yes, Lord. Yes, Lord. Amen. 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 Let us look to the Lord. Now may the grace of our Lord and Savior Jesus Christ, the communion, the fellowship, the sweet presence of his spirit be with us now and forevermore. And all of our children say it. Amen. Amen. God bless you. God bless you. We see you Wednesday night at 7 p.m. Join us then. So have a great day.